everyone and welcome back to the Blackford Book Club and another volume of my essential film reviews collection. Thanks for being there everyone. Well here we go, the film that I obsess over almost like no other. This is Magnolia from 1999, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. What am I doing? I'm quietly judging you. Seen on far too many occasions for me to admit. Okay, the old joke is I watch this once a month just to keep my hand in, and there's a little truth to the joke, but where do you start with this modern classic? Vague and bizarre weather reports, check. Raining frogs, check. Bizarre, interwoven but seemingly unconnected historical events, check. Tom Cruise acting his arse off, check. Melora Walters providing an acting masterclass of immense proportions, check. A beautiful yet haunting musical score from John Bryan, check. I could go on, Philip Seymour Hoffman is incredible, but I am exceedingly biased and simply blown away every time I watch this film. However, in the fairness of balance, some have criticised this as way too melancholic, Confusing, upsetting, and a plodding overlong drama, to those I retort, it is uplifting beyond measure, and with a screenplay from director Anderson that resonates through every character, and central performances that astound me every time. This is but the tip of a very deep iceberg, again covering relationships, human frailty, desperation, loneliness, despair, but intermingled with joy, redemption, recovery, and the triumph of the human spirit. Whenever you're settled into the film, a seemingly unconnected event is interwoven into the narrative to make you question the event and its relevance. Oh, and there's seven to eight interweaving stories from rich, seemingly unconnected characters all taking place at the same time, in the same city, which slowly and deliberately come together to produce a sublime piece of cinema. The DVD Extras has a feature length documentary on the making of this masterpiece, which is as essential a watch as the film itself. I can't possibly do this film justice. It truly is a masterpiece, and the starting point for my cinematic love for poor Thomas Anderson. Back to the film itself, you have Tom Cruise as never seen before and never better as men's sexual counsellor Frank T.J. Mackey. Julianne Moore as guilt-ridden, drug-taking, cheating wife, Linda Partridge, to Jason Robards, Earl Partridge. John C. Riley's error-prone but good-hearted policeman, Jim Curring. Philip Baker Hall dominates the screen in every scene as Jimmy Gator. And Philip Seymour Hoffman's heartbreaking performance as male nurse, Phil Palmer. This truly is a stellar cast and a stellar film with numerous more cameo performances from Luis Guzman, Alfred Molina, Michael Bowen and Melinda Dillon to name but a few. Yet to be mentioned, a quiz kid Donny Smith, brilliantly portrayed by William H. Macy. Melora Walters will break your heart as Claudia and Jeremy Blackman similarly as the precocious quiz kid Stanley Spectre. The following short scene gets me every time, is the most bizarre and surreal in a very high calibre list of bizarre and surreal moments, and is roughly four minutes of screen time from this 188 minute masterclass. It occurs towards the end of Act 2, and it tells you everything and nothing, and leads us on to the fantastic soundtrack accompanying the film. As the strains of Amy Mann's brilliant Wise Up begins, so too do all of our main characters in the film, singing along in separate edited segments to the entirety of the song, beginning with Claudia as first she announces, You're so stupid, before snorting two lines of cocaine and singing along, the camera slowly panning into a close-up of her before slowly cutting to Jim, now also singing along, revealed by a slow pan around a bedroom door to reveal Jim sitting on the edge of his bed, the, the cross clearly illuminated on the wall behind him. Next is Jimmy Gator, sitting at home singing along as another slow pan closes in on him, followed by Donnie Smith, 
similar panning shot as before, this time his large winner's check clearly, clearly illuminated behind him as he sings along. Next is the stricken Earl Partridge and his nurse Phil Palmer, but here they are both singing along as the camera slowly pans past Phil and into a close-up of Earl. Now moving outside for the first time and two similar shots of separate cars drenched in the pouring rain and of firstly Linda Partridge singing along before a slow reveal shows Frank T.J. Mackey doing likewise before a final shot of Stanley Spectre brings the song and this bizarre scene to a close. Two interesting issues to note before we close. Firstly, Stanley's panning shot is the first to move away from a character as all of the others have been zooms or pans into a character. And secondly, as the song ends, as does the pouring rain, very abruptly, to be replaced with yet another bizarre weather forecast, rain clearing, breezy overnight. Leaving aside spoilers and major plot points, this film is as near as cinematic perfection as you can get. The overall soundtrack itself to the film is minimal, but saved, quite literally, by Amy Mann's haunting and beautiful Save Me over the closing credits, and Wise Up, as briefly described above. However, with various tracks interspersed within the film, the standalone soundtrack to the film is highly recommended. Dominated by Amy Mann with further tracks 1, Build That Wall, You Do, and Nothing Is Good Enough, there are also gems from Supertramp, The Logical Song, Gabrielle's Dreams, hilariously used in the film, and some joyous operatic pieces, such as Habanera from Carmen by Georges Bizet. Brilliantly and darkly funny, heartbreaking, thought-provoking, or melancholic and dreary drama. You take your chance, you choose your poison. Just watch out for the frogman in the tree, the guy on the roof, and those pesky raining frogs. It really happened, you know. If you haven't seen this film and are reading the characters as sex counsellor, male nurse, policeman, and quiz kids, and wondering what the hell is going on, well, welcome to the club. And the good news is it works perfectly. All of the disparate stories, events, cutscenes, and even the raining frogs it's a complete triumph of the will film. Magnolia from 1999, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. And I adore that film so much. I also turned on my brother Andy to this particular film. And he now likes it almost, almost as much as I do. It's my job in life. It's a cross that I bear, but I do try as I've been writing these film reviews for the last decade and reading for the last few weeks or trying to read. But I've been writing spoiler free film reviews for over a decade and I bring them to you here. Thanks very much for watching. Oh blimey. Go watch Magnolia. Go on, prove me wrong. It's 188 minutes of pure joy even though it's incredibly depressing. Right, go watch it. That's my advice. Go on. Dive into all the Paul Thomas Anderson films. Go on. Treat yourself. You're only alive once. Peace, everyone. And solidarity. Thanks very much for watching. Peace, everyone.